We're ready to make it so that the player can take damage and lose lives. And the first thing we're going to do is make it so that when the player gets hurt, it blows up and then is regenerated, but then has a little bit of invulnerability for a few seconds. So over here in the assets, I have created a sprite player hurt. And this is identical to the sprite player. It's just that I have added an empty frame here after the first image. And showing the preview, it'll just flicker that way. There's another way of doing this using draw events, but we're not going to do that for this game. And now we can open up our object player. So in the create event, we are going to create a new variable. So come to control, set variable, and the variable we are going to make is is underscore hurt. We're going to set that to false. And we're going to make it so the player can be hurt when they collide with the enemy bullets and the enemies themselves. We'll start with the bullets, so add event, collision, and we'll be looking for this object bullet. The object bullet is also a parent of the object boss bullet, so this will affect that as well. And first we need to test and see if we are not invulnerable. In other words, if we're not hurt already. So let's come to test variable, and we are going to test is underscore hurt. And if it's equal to false, bring in some blocks. And the first thing we are going to do is set variable and turn the variable is underscore hurt to true. And this way we cannot be damaged by multiple bullets at the same time. We could set up a hit point system for the player, but in these types of games, usually one hit kills the player, which makes it so challenging. So when the player gets hit by the bullet, we need to make the bullet disappear. So come over to main one and our destroy instance, and we are going to destroy the other, the object bullet. And before we destroy the player, we need to make an explosion. So create instance, and we are going to create the object explosion large. And the coordinates I'm going to give this is in the x position a negative sprite underscore width divided by two, sorry, two, and set to relative. The object player sprite has its origin point on the far right. And so in order to get the explosion to appear in the center, we need to use this formula of a negative sprite width divided by two, and that should put it right in the middle of the sprite. Click OK. And instead of actually destroying the player, we're just going to move it off screen and then have it pop back on. This it will make it easier for us rather than just creating a new object and determining whether or not it's hurt and all that complicated stuff. We can just use the same object. So we're going to come to move and jump to position. And we're going to set it to negative 50 and negative 50. And this will set it off the screen, off above the top left corner. Click OK. And then finally, we need to make it so that the player comes back on screen. So we'll use a timer for that. Go to main two, set alarm, and we'll set the alarm to say 10, and we'll give it alarm one. So let's go to add event, alarm, alarm one, and we're going to have it jump back to where it originally was. So let's go to move, and come down to the jump category, jump to start. We need to change the sprite to our sprite hurt. So let's go to main, change sprite, we will change this to our sprite player hurt. We can leave everything as is. And then we're going to have to set up another alarm so that we can change back to normal and get rid of our invulnerability. So let's go to main two, set alarm again, and we'll set this to 60 steps, so two seconds. We want to change this to alarm two, click OK, and then add event alarm, alarm two. So now we can change our sprite back to the original one. So main one, change sprite. We will change it to sprite player. And then we need to turn off the invulnerability. So control set variable is underscore hurt back to false. And that should do it. So let's go ahead and run the game. And the boss will come on and shoot, take a hit, blow up come back flickering for a while, but you see that I do have invulnerability for a while. Right now, though, we've got it set up so that the player just sort of goes forever. 
we'll have to set up a life counter system, but first let's also set up functionality so that the player can be destroyed if it collides with an enemy. And all we have to do for that is duplicate this collision with object bullet. So come right click it and duplicate event. And we're going to do collision with object enemy parent. When we collide with the enemy, I also want to add another explosion on the enemy itself. So let's duplicate this create instance. Let's copy and paste. And I'm going to take the other one, apply it to other, and instead of a negative sprite width, I'm going to give it a positive sprite width. And then finally, I want to have the same thing happen when we collide with the boss. So let's duplicate the object bullet again. Let's have it collide with object boss. And we don't want a collision with the boss to destroy the boss. So let's get rid of this action. And that should work. So let's go ahead and test. Let's see if I can run into it before it shoots me. Yes, OK. So I should be able to get hit by a bullet. And I just come flashing back. Let's open up our room one and remove the boss character. And let's put in some of our other enemies, like an asteroid and jellyfish and a squid. Okay, I'll go run into the asteroid. It creates another explosion. Run into the squid. The jellyfish should be able to shoot me, and hopefully I can run into it. And it did. But we don't want our player to be able to die again and again and again. So we'll set up a life counter and a scorekeeper next.